The West is ignoring Pakistan's super flood. Heat is the warning. Tomorrow it will be you. Today, Pakistan, the world's fifth most populous country, is fighting for its survival. This summer, erratic moons and rain batter it. The country from north to south sinned. The southernmost province received 464 percent more rain over the last few weeks than the 30 years average for the period. At the same time, Pakistan's glaciers are melting at a rate never seen before. These two consequences of climate crisis have combined to create a monstrous super flood that has ravaged the country. Ninety percent of crops in Sindh have been damaged. Faisal Adi, who runs Pakistan's largest social welfare organization, the Adi Foundation, was warned that those who don't die from the flood would risk die from starvation. A famine is coming. The only question is how soon. Economic losses are estimated to be excess of 30 billion dollars. 50 million people have been entirely displaced. There is a threat of malaria epidemic as flood water lies stretched. State light image have shown the shocking formation of a hundred kilometer wide inland lake in Sin, due to overflow from the Indus River, and there is no doubt. That a generation will be cast backward as already merged education and health service are violently disrupted. More than 400 children have died, and with the winter coming and millions left without shelters, many more will. This is a tragedy of nightmarish proportion, and yet if you live outside Pakistan, you probably haven't heard so much about it, given its near total lack of interest in the fate of Pakistan. It would seem that the rest of the world hasn't considered that this epic humanitarian crisis is a peek into the apocalypse future that awaits us all. No nation needs have any special feelings toward Pakistan, but the horror faced by the country today are a clear warning of the consequences of universal and pervasive climate breakdown. Human beings have destroyed our one and only planet. What is happening in Pakistan today is proof of that. Our voracious burning of fossil fuel, obnoxious disregard for the wild and natural world we inherit, and criminal consumption means that no country, no matter its wealth, will be immune from the consequences of global heating. Today it is Pakistan. Tomorrow it will be California, France, Australia, the world. Well, it has been touching to see how ordinary people from faraway countries have shown solidarity with Pakistan. Donating that they can to flood relief effort, the silence from major international figures and Western media at large has been disparaging, if not unsurprising. The week the flood hit, there were more newspaper column inches devoted to a Finnish prime minister who likes to party than to fact that a third of Pakistan was submerged. This is not a question of disaster features. This is not our first disaster caused by the climate crisis. In 2010, Pakistan also suffered catastrophic flooding. At the time, the UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon said the scale of flooding Pakistan had endured was greater than anything he had ever seen before. Make no mistake, this is a global disaster, Moon said. Pakistan is facing a slow motion to sunny its destructive powers with alchemate and growing with time. Our countries and our life are dispensable for the world at large. We have always known this, but we are simmering with the range now. What else can you feel when eight hundred and eighty million dollar was raised in a day and a half after the cathedrals of Notre Dame suffer a fire in twenty twenty one? But an entire country of drowning poor must beg for climate aids and assistance. It's time that the world wakes up to the terrifying future we have created for ourselves. We have no chance of surviving otherwise. That's it for today. Thank you and goodbye.